Let's make a TV be gone. Hello, internets, and welcome to the show. Today we're making a TV be gone. I'm going to start by stripping these leads. TV be gone's will turn off up to 320, no, 230, excuse me, 230 kinds of TVs uh, with a single button push. So, and they work up to 150 feet in version 1.2 which is fantastic. You can turn off every TV in the building across the street if you can see them. Um, next, we've got this chip mount in the middle. I like to put this flat on a table and then solder it in. It's a little bit easier than trying to hold it in a pair of uh, helping hands like I've got here on the, in the top, right, uh, top left. You'll notice the way I'm, I'm holding the end of the solder with my thumb. It's really easy to twist my left hand and push out with my thumb so I don't have to let go and I can keep getting more solder. You can see my irons had a little bit of use. Um, if there's a way to clean that, let me know. I'd like to keep it in the best possible condition. Now we're putting in the ceramic oscillator. The oscillator controls the timing on the chip and that in turn controls the speed that the lights blink at. If the lights don't blink at the right speed, the TV doesn't recognize what the message that it's receiving and it doesn't turn off. You can put it in either way, it doesn't care. Some items like capacitors, you can only put them in one way. LEDs, same story. They have a longer leg on one side, and the long leg is positive, like right here. This capacitor, I'm going to bend this over sideways so it doesn't stick up too much. And you see the long leg went into the hole that had the little plus sign next to it on the board. All right. For some reason, I always enjoy putting in resistors. I don't know what it is. Um, if you bend them into a sort of a C shape, before you put them down, they just slot right in. And then you fold those legs back. And you see here I've put several pieces and they're all going in the same direction, which makes it really easy to do them all soldered up at once. If I was gonna do this chip again, I would do all the lowest profile items first. The resistors would all go first, and then whatever was bigger than that, so that would probably be the oscillator, then the transistors, then the, um, the mount for the IC. I just realized as I'm clipping these, I'm gonna be mixing in all my garbage with my good parts. I need a little way to store them so that they're covered and free of garbage. But I'd like to be able to reach for my new parts without having to let go of what I'm doing. So a little door that opens automatically when I put my hand near it would be perfect. And maybe I'll make that in an upcoming video. All right, let's get that chip in there. Now you saw I folded the legs over a little. By default, when you get them, they stick out a little bit too much and that's really annoying. Also, you gotta make sure you put this chip in the right way. Backwards would never be good. There's a little dot on these chips and that tells you which end is up. Now the dot will be next to input number one. Uh, some people like to listen to, to music when they're making stuff. I like to listen to the French CBC because they play a lot of jazz music and um, I find them just kind of poetic actually. Uh, if you don't speak French it doesn't matter because it's still great music and then the advertising doesn't make any sense to you. So yeah, you can, watch, you can listen to it online if you want. Now I just put in the LED and again this is one of those ones you have to put it in the right way. Adafruit do a really great job with their circuit boards, that's adafruit.com they make sure their boards are all very clearly labeled and here goes 
one of the transistors. This would be the 2907. Now the difference between the 2907 and the 2222, if your eyesight isn't very good and you're trying to tell them apart without trying to read a really tiny print, the secret is that the 2907 has three straight legs. They're just, they're perfectly straight. And the 2222s are bent out a bit like a fork. You can see one right at the bottom of the screen. And how the legs are a little bit wider. He's got a bit of a cowboy stance, if you will. Um, or maybe a Day of the Triffids. Uh, I mean the one from Mars. What's the, not Mars Attacks. Not the day the Earth stood still. War of the Worlds. There we go. H.G. Wells. War of the Worlds. Oh, where's my brain today? Okay. Clip, clip, clip. Clip, clip, clip. I'm a little disappointed in these cutters. They don't... I've worn out the tip a little bit. I probably need to get them resharpened. but perfect for cutting these leads off really, really close to the board. Alrighty. And as always, after every bit, I give a little visual inspection on both sides to make sure that I haven't forgotten to solder something. You gotta watch with this little button here. I used to always put my thumb on the far side of the board and just pinch together, and then I'd end up stabbing myself with the legs which is like a vicious little spider bite. Um, at least that's what always went through my head. And who likes to eat spider bites? Well, if you do, you've, you've found your, your new calling. Uh, for the rest of us, I suggest just keep your thumb out of the way. Now here we go. These are the ones I was talking about, the 2222s. Two, 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 There's four of them. And these... These help turn the light on and off. And, and actually, they also manage the... Um, the power difference. The amount of power used for to run this circuit uh, is a lot less than, than is different from the LEDs. So the transistor um, lets you run both without frying one or the other. And numero catro. It's much easier to bend the legs in than to bend the legs out when you're trying to get them in holes. So that's why I I like to bend them out a little bit before I try and stick them in. All right, let's see. Am I going to remember to do every single one? There's something to be said for doing one at a time. I've never been a very patient man. I really haven't learned that lesson. And a two, and a three, and a four. There we go. Is there some piece of information that I should give, like at the start of the video, that would make more sense to you? You know, like if I told you how long the video was going to take, or um, um, you want to see a picture of every tool that you need before you begin, so you can follow along, um, let me know. Uh, like I said, I'm trying to make these videos better and make them useful to you. So uh, anything, any hints you can give me would be great. <sighs> and do, 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 do. There we go. There we go. A little more snippy snip. I'm really looking forward to taking this to a bar and or a restaurant and not having to ask them to turn it off anymore. Just click. And then I can hear the voice in my head again and enjoy the time with my family and friends. As my, I mean, I love my family and friends. I want to talk to them. But if we go somewhere to a restaurant and that TV is on in the corner of my vision, it's distracting. And I think that's rude, you know? Um, if you're talking to someone and they start looking somewhere else, I'd feel like, man, you don't care what I'm saying. And what that TV is doing is, is it's it's causing me to, to insult. It's just an animal reaction. Look, something's moving. Check it out. And 
and it's not intended at all. So the only way I figure is to just turn the TV off. Who's gonna miss it anyways, right? Starting to feel the same way about Reddit, and um, in fact, I do feel the same way about Reddit. And I don't even have Facebook on my phone anymore. I guess I'm just showing my age, hey? I just want to get more done, and I can't do it if I'm on those websites. Can you? How do you do it? Show me a concrete example. What do you do? What do you make? Send me a video response. I want to know. As it happens, uh, you can, if you're in the States, you can get these from Adafruit and a bunch of other places. If you're in Vancouver, Canada, which is my hometown, you can buy these from me. And I bought it in a whole bunch of extra ones, and I'll bring them to you at the Vancouver Hackspace. Um, and then together, we can solder them up. Even if you don't know how to solder, I will give you a free soldering lesson here in Vancouver at the Hackspace if you buy one of these boards. I will happily walk you through the process. All right, I'm back to the classic, the old one. Now we're soldering up these tips because they're they're made of lots of little wires. There's solid core and there's strands. And these are strands. So by putting a little bit of solder on them, it kind of glues them together. And it literally solders them together. And that makes it a little bit easier to get it through the hole. Not only that, it makes it simpler. I'm checking here to see which one's positive. I don't want to wire it backwards. Um, once it's through the hole, the tip can be bent a little bit and it holds in quite a bit better. Let's see, I got a little bit too much solder here. Doesn't want to play ball. I keep an old yogurt container on the end of my desk and I have just about every tool that I use every single day in that bucket. By the way, I've only gotten one response so far. How do I teach my nephew that doing his homework is important? Let me know. Video response, comment, anything. Now I'm just going to solder this up. Then I'm going to cut off these leads. And I'm going to use that little piece of sticky tape, double-sided tape. And we should be done. The way to test this uh, when we're done is to uh, push the button while looking at it in a dark room through a camera lens, even like an iPhone or an Android phone, they can, they'll show the blinking lights even though you can't see them with your naked eye, which is kind of sci-fi trippy. Um, but you'll see the four blinking lights and you'll know that it's working. Uh, so here we go. See, that folds over like that. Now, I don't know if I'm supposed to let the, the lights stick out past the end of the battery casing, but I prefer to not. I think it's a little bit uh, safer and it makes it easier to put it in a box later. Um, I'm probably going to 3D print some kind of container that will protect protect the whole device and only show the, the LEDs and the button that I want to push. Um, when that happens, I'll put the, the plan on Thingiverse. Okay. As always, it's Dan, marginallyclever.com. And I would, uh, I would love to hear from you with your comments and your feedback. Please share with your friends and have a beautiful day.